crowds where I've been like, holy shit, these people should all just get in a bus and drive off a fucking ditch. Have you ever worked with Gary Goldman? <laughs> yeah, why? You ever see Gary snap? Yeah, he snapped on me. He threw me across a fucking room on the last <laughs> comic standing. You don't know this? No. Last con- You know, a lot of people want to know this story on Twitter, too. I want to know this. Uh, but what I want to know about- I was on that year. What I want to know about you is when you're on stage and you're a guy that you confide in me as friends, you'll go, you know, it's a fucking tough business. It's a hustle. Maybe I should just fucking open a paint store in Topanga Canyon because <laughs> apparently this shit ain't working out. But what I ask you, Eddie Ift, when you're on stage- and inciting a riot, like at you're at Altamont, isn't there a lead up to that where you realize, oh, this is where I make the entire audience angry, or I can go, hey man, you know, just chill out, let's have a good I've time. Got, I've gotten much better with chilling out and just laughing it off, but I used to take everything personally. Mm. And if somebody would say, oh, you suck, or heckle me in any way, I took that as a, like so personally. And it was like I would attack back. Like one night my friends came to a show and five of my friends sat in the front row and clapped at all my jokes like like they would go (laughs) all together. And then they would laugh. Like a Cosmos game. Yeah. And they would laugh at my setups and not at my (laughs) punchlines. And they were throwing the whole show off. And I kept telling them, I'm like, stop, stop. You're ruining the show. You're ruining the show. And they were having the best time of their life. They thought it was the funniest. They're gaslighting you. Yeah. And so – at the it, like, I get the light. I'm, I'm. It's forty minutes is over, and I'm. And I've ruined the show. It's or my friends have ruined the show. So I go to the audience. I tried to have them thrown out. The bouncers wouldn't throw them out. And I'm like, these are my friends. I'm telling you to throw them out. Throw them out. So I said to the audience, I'm sorry. The show sucked. I apologize. I'm sorry. Did 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 you have a good time? I don't know why I asked this. And one guy yells out, No, it fucking sucked. It's the worst show I've ever seen. And I go. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. And he goes, well, you asked. <laughs> and yeah. I go, and I go, and all of a sudden, I know I, it was my fault. It sucked. I snap on this guy. I go, how much did you pay to get in? And the guy goes, with everything? I go, yeah, with everything. He goes, I don't know, $45. And, and you I went in your pocket. Got it, the money out of my pocket. Yeah. I put it down. I go, there's your money. I'm sorry. And he goes, no, bring it to me. And I go, oh, boy. I go, fuck you. Come and get it. And he goes, no, you bring it to me. So I crumpled it up. I ran over to him and I threw it in his face. Where was this now? In a club in New York City. This so like, New York, London, there's no place you don't make people hate you. So this guy then – and then I kind of snapped. And I pull, and then afterwards I find the guy in the street and I go, I'm sorry, man. I just lost it. My friends were pissing me off and it wasn't your fault. I know the show sucked and it was my fault it sucked and – and you, you could hate me for all you want, you know, like, and he was like, no, man, I understand. And he was really cool about it, but I was such an asshole on stage. I, I, if, I have not done this. I want you to know I haven't done this in about five years at least. When I'm on stage and someone heckles and, – and, and there is like uh, when you when you headline headline, like you're the reason they've assembled, the, the heckling drops exponentially because mm-hmm. everyone's there because they go like Jay Moore's in town. I'm going to buy my ticket a month out. Uh, so if there is a heckler, they are like this interloper where the rest of the room goes, whoa, like you need to shut up because I, I bought my ticket a month ago at StubHub and we're here, you know, this is it. Right. This is our hen party. We planned our entire hen party around Jay Moore's show at fucking Gotham Comedy Club, yeah. which I'll be at in the end of October. So when I get hecklers, my whole thing is I go, oh, all right, be cool. Man. Like I, it never dawned, I never go, it never dawned on me to go like, fucking shut up. I'll go, okay, man. Like I put my hand out almost like I'm talking to a child and I go, okay, man, chill out though, okay? Cause, and I say, because I don't want you to get thrown out because now it's off of me. Now they're like, it's all about the club, this big fucking corporation we're in together. Yeah. Like, all right, be cool though, man, because I don't want you to get thrown out, all right? And then they'll say something else and I'll look over like two or three times and like maybe the fourth time I'll just go, you have to shut the fuck up. <laughs> and you get the applause and then the fifth time I go, you got to go. Yeah, I mean that's that's how I deal with it now, pretty much. But you also had the you had the uh, the pleasure of dealing with a lot more fame than I had, where I was yeah. always just a guy stuck on the show. Yeah, so I'm saying like yeah. I have the the luxury uh, uh, be, the luxury of like we're, right, you're right. the reason we came. Right. Not do you want to go to the club and you happen to be yeah, there? Yeah. Let's go to the club because you're there. That buys you, and it also buys you probably. 10 minutes of wiggle room for like new bits 
like weird pauses and shit. They're just like, hey man, we we think you're it's a, it's incredible. Yeah. So Gary Goldman and I, we're doing Last Comic Standing, and I'm like the guy, like it's my show. I was on that year, and I remember, and I'm having a ball, and we're down to like the final eight, and I break balls now, uh, but I used to break balls like East Coast, like because I came oh, up yeah, in comedy, like are... Voss, Keith Robinson. You know, like Opie and Anthony, that whole crew, like they, Norton, Ruth, Colin, they <laughs> fucking will take you out. Patrice, they'll fucking kill you. I've gone home with my fucking tail between my legs so and, many times. From yeah, that. so like when you bring that shit to the West Coast or anybody, like you sit down at a table and go, hey, so what's going on here besides fucking four assholes sitting down trying to eat and look like people sit that like they don't know you're like doing a I character. Scared, I scared people when I first came out here and I would I'd be honest. And they were like, and joke with them, but like, fuck with them. And I like your shirt. There's no better way to say, I'm never getting laid tonight. What a fucking dick. Like, to me, that's just like what I would say to Keith. And Keith would go, oh, god damn, fuck you, Jay Moore, god damn it. God damn it. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> and, but when you start, so I'm hosting and producing Last Comic Standing. And what I have failed as a human being at this time to realize because i was so self-centered and such a, a douche i guess i remember you flew first class we were on coach oh yeah that's kind of how it goes when you create the show i mean what the fuck <laughs> did you uh, have to get on the same plane with us yes just to let you know uh so what, i'm breaking balls but what i failed to realize in my mind is someone's getting voted off of a fucking show tonight and like they're totally stressed out about it and i'm just showing up like uh eh. And Todd Glass and I always do like Don Rickles to each other, mm -hmm. which lends itself to just going like, anyone's good. <laughs> Gary Goldman's walking around going, look at me, look at me. Like not, nothing even makes sense. We're just talking shit <laughs> and like, anyway, but you know, gang. And Todd Glass and Gary Goldman are like fake wrestling, like doing like yeah. a fake wrestling thing, standing up, like kind of grab ass in a little. And I literally walk up. I've been in the theater four minutes. I walk into the theater, I walk up behind him, and I go, it's good. Gary Goldman's in the corner going, how do I fix my hand? And like, I don't even remember what I said, but whatever I said, Gary just turns around, picks me up. Gary Goldman's six foot six, yeah, 240 pounds, and he just picks me up and runs the length of the stage, like not like a box kick thing. He just like spazzes out, and he's, he's an enormous, strong yeah, man. Yeah, he played, played tight end at Boston University. Yeah. And he runs across the stage holding me. And when he gets, runs out of, come on in. When he runs out of stage, he just throws me against the wall. Like how you would just throw luggage. Like, fuck it, I quit. And he leaves. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. Cause I've never been attacked and just held. Like it was, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also like knew it was interesting. Like I knew, like you could talk shit to a guy and you go, I could fight. And I still to this day, like Gary Goldman and I, I'm pretty sure like if a fight just fucking erupts, I'm pretty sure I could chop him up. Pretty sure. He still but looks when like you, a tough guy. But when he grabs you and he's got that like two a day tight end fucking body of muscle. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's like, and like all of a sudden like you're in this anaconda man's arms. You go. Oh my God. And, and it was, he, so yes, I have seen Gary Goldman snap on me. And then it gets broken up. And then the wheels start going of, you know what? Fuck that. Who the f even though I'm completely wrong at the time, you start going like, how were you wrong though? You were just fucking around with them. The guy, these guys are about to go on uh, yeah, I guess you're television. Right. I guess you're right. And some of their lives are going to begin. Yeah. And some of their lives are going to end. They're just out. Right. They're fucking Rich my, Voss. My, mine ended very early on that show. Right. And then you're in England getting punched out at the <laughs> frog and barrel. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. I went straight to England. So Gary and I uh, had words. And he apparently I – did. I just never measured how much I had been fucking with him and teasing him relentlessly. And uh, it just reached that point. And that uh, was the yeah, night – that, that, that was like point. an hour before the audience got loaded in and they go, and going home is – and he was like, I think one of the final three. So then I go to his dressing room to apologize because I realize Barry Katz is the one that actually goes, this guy's about to get either 
his dreams fulfilled <laughs> or he's about to get voted off man, the island man. and you come in and start fucking with him. Man, I think you owe him an apology. Why would you hurt a man's feelings? I don't understand why you take that time destroyed. to break balls. That's now you don't see Peter Engel running around and teasing people. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's a fair point. Like, can so we I talk walk... Barry the rest of this episode? Well, I'll tell you, man. It's unbelievable. So I go into Goldman's dressing room to apologize, and I open the door. I go, and what did Gary say? I go to uh, apologize, and as soon as I open the dressing room door, he just throws a fucking water bottle and whizzes it past my face. So then I go crazy again, and I go, Jesus. you motherfucker, do you want to fucking do it for real? Uh, but now I know how strong he is. So I got to make sure I don't get the undertow. I got to stay arm's reach and more from him. I got to tap, tap, tap and move around and wait for that big right cross because he is a fucking tank. Uh, and Alonzo Bowden is holding me back. And I'm not really fighting to get through Alonzo because Alonzo is one of those guys when he goes, hey, man, chill out. He's got this Yoda-esque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, 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 obviously, yeah, yeah. I'm doing something wrong because Alonzo's the voice. T- It's the Alon- James Earl Jones voice. Hey, man, this yeah. is not CNN. <laughs> And then Tammy Pescatelli is holding back. Did you hit her? No. Oh. Uh, Kath- no, Kathleen Madigan was holding back Gary Goldman. <laughs> so we got separated and then like they did their shows. I did not know this. I'd never heard the story. Yeah, and it was, it was completely my fault. And I went up to him. We were eating. We were in line like at catering and he uh, goes, you know, that's two times you, uh, you, cause they wanted him off. The- they- he was going to leave the show. And I said, I'm wrong. You cannot have this guy off the show. And they're like, he attacked the executive producer and creator. Like, just shows you how skewed yeah, yeah, yeah. network thinking is. Yeah. Like, he's out. And I'm like, no, he's not out. He's, I'm, I'm out. Like, I'll, yeah. like, leave him alone. And I went to bat. And he knew it. And Barry, I guess, let him know because he was managing him at the time. And we're in line waiting for our lunch. And he goes, you know, that's the second time you saved my life. But a month before this happened... Bert is at Gary Goldman's house, and I call those guys up, and I go, do you, per Kreischer, I go, do you guys want to go eat lunch? I'm in Hollywood. And they're like, nah, we're just going to hang out in Goldman's apartment. And I'm like, and I berate these guys. Like, you know what, you assholes, I finally get within a half mile radius, and you can't even come get fucking lunch. And they're like, come on, man. And they're like, no. And I'm like, you know what, you guys, I'm fucking coming over there, and I'm dragging you out of the apartment. Bottom line is we wind up eating at King's Roadhouse Cafe for 40 minutes. When we get back to Goldman's apartment, there's fucking police tape around oh, his door and the neighbor's door. And there's a fucking body with fucking holes in it. Someone shot someone? Someone shot and stabbed and like tried to light it on fire. And Goldman's a guy that'll – he'll uh, he'll come out and go, I heard a noise. Uh, <laughs> just thought I'd see what's going on. Like, so he credit, he thought like, you know, it's just a stroke of me going like, I'm not taking no for an answer that I saved his life. And then I saved his life by not having him jettisoned into space of purgatory of stand up. But I'm so now a- you have me scared that we're talking about him. That next time I see him, I'm going to get thrown through a door. <laughs> no, he's delightful. And he's got more jokes about fucking cookies and treats than anybody. And Dude, I've grown yeah. to like love his stand up. Oh, I love his stand up too. So we're at lunch, and this shows you I did have a Tupac in me that you had in England. And he said, you know, that's the second time you uh, you saved my life. And I go, third. And he goes, well, and we're holding fucking trays with like cod and brown rice and shit on it from a caterer. I go, third. And he goes, what do you mean third? I go, when I didn't just fucking kill you in front of everybody in the theater. <laughs> but like, I know his hand has been, de- he's, he yeah. already has seven cards in his hand. He can't trade him in anymore. <laughs> like he can't just kick the shit out of him. He would be a real man if he did. So, uh, I feel bad for all that. But since like I see Gary Goldman stand up, like, like someone put a, tweet up of him talking about like a disc man and it's like the funniest clean stuff i've, I've seen that joke it's yeah, fucking yeah, brilliant he is, so when have genius. you seen him snap i saw him snap and i was at the haha club over in the valley have you ever yeah. done that sh- like club in, and magnolia uh, in yeah and he's doing the he, it was like a just a shitty night when we all at first moved out here and uh He's up on stage and some, some girl is on her phone and she won't get off her phone. She's just having a conversation. Wow. He goes, will you shut your phone off? And she doesn't. She keeps talking. And he goes, I, I asked you to shut your phone off. And she's like, no. And I'm sitting there with my girlfriend at the time and we're in the audience behind them because I'm about to go on like a couple after. 
And Gary goes, I told you to turn the phone off. You and he just starts snapping on this. <laughs> you girl. think he's kidding when he starts, right? Yeah, because it yeah. starts to it gets he's elevated. He's the nicest guy. And he's going, You put the whore in horrible. And he's just yelling at her. And my girlfriend looks at me and goes, This is completely wrong. This is terrible. And I look at my girlfriend and I go, Fuck. No, yeah. no, it's not. That she bitch deserves her fucking this. phone off. And I'm like, yeah. 